Hello everyone, I'm recording this extra video to show you two more examples about uh, the questions you may see on the midterm. And I, I have received this kind of request from uh, at least one student and I understand uh, this is the first exam and uh, this could be uh, stressful to you guys I definitely want to give you more ideas about the coming midterm as I said before I don't want to surprise my students okay so let's see the first one so for the first question given a list of integers as a and the algorithm below sums all the odd values okay so we have a function and it's a sum odd values and we take a parameter as a and we create a sum as zero and we visit all the values uh, from 1 to n so we are using the value i as the index and for each AI we visit we test whether this AI is odd or not if it is odd and then we want to add this value to sum and eventually we return the sum okay really straightforward this is a CS1 coding and uh, the, que uh, the question we want to ask is what is the TN for this algorithm and analyze the asymptotic performance of this algorithm okay so let's take a look on my drawing board and well I think the first question is do you want to really count this one the very first line as a primitive step and for uh, from my perspective I wouldn't do so but if you count this as one uh, that's also okay but I'm gonna put a question mark it depends on you whether you want to count it or not and for the next line uh, sum equals zero that's definitely one primitive step and how about the next this is uh, for i from one to n so how many times we are going to execute this line of code and n times right if n is the length of the list a and then uh, if a i is odd so we have to grab the value using i as index and we want to test whether it's an odd value so for this line this line it definitely runs for n times for every value we have to test whether ai is an odd value or not and how about the next line well if ai is is indeed an odd value and then we will go down into this line of code and my question is, should we count this as n question mark so what's your idea the answer is yes we do want to count this at the end because we are analyzing the worst case and then what's the worst case the worst case is for each value we are visiting this line will give us a true so we go down here so for the worst case will be a list like this so for all the values they are odd so we have to constantly go to this line of the code okay and then for the return i would say this is a primitive step so for the tn if we want to add everything together here i'm gonna skip this one so i'm gonna get a 3n minus sorry plus a 2. is that correct okay so after we have the tn and then uh, you have to move on and do the big o and then how do you do the big O? So for the big O, we are trying to have a another, uh, uh, well, we can see this is a linear, so it is a O in. So, well, we just grab the highest, highest degree of polynomial and we know that, but how do we prove that? So how about we say uh, we have F in as in, and then we have a constant C as 10 okay so tn which is 3n plus 2 is smaller or equal to c multiplied by uh oops excuse me hmm. c multiplied by fn for n greater than n zero and then what should be the n zero and say if we want to n zero to be one 
And in this case, 3m plus a 2 will give us a 5. And then uh, uh, n multiplied by 10 will give us 10. So that is OK. So we can say n 0 is 1. OK, so let me repeat that. We are trying, we have the Tn, and then we want to find a C value, a Fn, and then N0. So just now we discussed, we observe that, we observe that it is linear, so this Fn has to be N. And after that, we do want to have a C which is higher than 3. You can pick 5 or 4 or 7, that's OK. I just want to pick a higher number, so I decide to pick 10. And after that, you have to find a, an n0 value so that for all the n value greater than n0, c multi multiplied by fn is greater than tn. So I just now I did some math and then I find that after n0, uh, after 1 or higher than 1, and then we will always have 10n is greater or equal to 3n plus a 2. So we say uh, o n is for a tn is O n, okay? And then after that, you also want to prove that it is o, uh, it is omega n. And then by putting those two information together, we can say this is theta n, okay? So this is my analysis of this algorithm, and I can prove that this is a linear algorithm. Okay, so this is the first additional question I have prepared. And let's, let me clear everything. And let's move on to the next one. So for the next one, this is a recursive algorithm. This algorithm takes an array A and then it specify I and J saying where to begin, where to end. And, uh, the, and it will, as long as I is still smaller than J, and then it wants to swap the, the value on index I and the value on index J. So we want to do a swap. And after that, we want to continue this reverse by doing a recursion. So we are still doing uh, the reverse array, but now I want to move the I cursor up by one and the J cursor down by one. Okay, and then uh, again, the requirement is what's a TN and then analyze the asymptotic performance of this algorithm. Okay, I didn't specify uh, use the substitution or iteration or the master theorem. So you can decide whichever you want to use. Okay, so let me uh, grab this code. Come on. And okay, just four lines of code, right? Okay, and then uh, for the first for the first line, this is the definition of the function, and I I wouldn't really count this as a one primitive step. And for this one, okay, this is one for sure because this is a primitive step. And for this uh, this swap, it's a primitive step. And then for this re uh, and then this is the recursive cow. Okay, so before I move on and talk more about how to analyze the TM, how about I give you an example? Say a equals 1, uh, 3, 7, 11, and 15. And then how do we count this? And let's say we are using the one based indexing as we used in our textbook. So uh, we want to do a reverse array. And then the first parameter is going to be a. And then from 1, to five. Are you okay with that? Okay, so uh, there, uh, th this index one, two, three, four, five. So the lower index, lowest index is one and uh, the highest index is five. And then I want to reverse the A starting from the very beginning at the very end. And then uh, the first step, let me put one, three, seven, 11, and 15. Okay, at the very beginning, I is here and j is here so we want to swap the uh, the index uh, the value on index i and index j so i'm gonna delete this five and then i'm gonna put it here okay i'm being lazy so we have skipped uh, we have swapped the very beginning at the very last and after that oops come on and after that, when we uh, when we want to do the recursive cow, I want to move the i 
up by one and then j down by one okay so this will be the first recursive cow we are moving the i and j both towards the middle and then we want to check this condition again i smaller than j so yes so we want to swap the 3 and 11 again so let me swap this let me swap the 11 and 3 and after that we want to do i up by 1 and j down by 1 so eventually you will have i here and j here again Okay, so let me erase those two i and j, and now we want to go to the uh, the next recursive cow, and we want to check this line of code. If i is smaller than j, and in this case i equals j, so we are at the base case. So I would call this is a hidden base case because it's not defined explicitly and for the base case we have nothing to do since i and j they have already met and we are pointing on the middle value 7 we don't have to do anything and then that's the end of this recursive algorithm okay so as you can see we have got all those values reversed okay so let's answer this question what's the cost of this recursive cow Okay, and originally we want to swap, we want to swap all the five values. And after we have done one recursion, what is the problem size? The problem size has reduced from five to to what? To three, right? Well, every time when we do a swap, we swap the two values and then we go inside and then the problem size will be reduced by two okay so if the whole cost of this algorithm is tn for the total cost of this algorithm and then for this line of the code the cost of this recursion will be tn minus two Okay, well, this is a funny Tn because this Tn equals Tn divided by 2 and then plus 2 outside. This means, well, if we are still using the getting one step closer a mindset of doing the recursion, but not getting one step closer, we are getting two steps closer to our goal. Okay, so this is the Tn. And my question is, how do you want to uh, re uh, uh, solve this recursion? So master theorem, my first question is, can you use the master theorem? Okay, for the master theorem, we are seeing the Tn like this. So for the Tn, it should be a constant for n equals 1. And then we have the, the a, t, n divided by b, and plus a fn. Okay, so we have to have this type of the Tn to use the master theorem. But for this Tn we currently have, it's not really on this shape. There is no b value here. That's the painful part. So my answer is for the master theorem that's not the way to go so you have to decide if you want to use the substitution or the recursion and i will say using substitution is kind of a overkill we can do the iteration so say t and divide by four and then plus four or if we do one step further and then that's a t and divide by six and then plus a six okay so the python should be t and divided by k multiplied by 2 and then uh, plus a k, mod, uh, k plus uh, k multiply 2 okay so this will be the python and then where do we stop we are going to stop either when we get down to 0 or we get down to 1 but anyhow well we are stop at say well let's say n minus k multiplied by 2 equals equals 1 or 
zero. So those are two stop conditions, but it doesn't really matter too much. And in this case, and k will be n minus one, and then divided by two. And then uh, you can say this is a floor division, and then it should be accurate enough. Or if you simply say it is a n divided by two, I'm going to take it. OK, so this is the stop condition. And after that, and uh, you can do the further analysis using the iteration. Uh, and then this is my idea of how to analyze this code. And for this code analysis, I think the tricky part is, well, uh, how do you find the TN of this recursive step? We can work on a small example, and then you will find that for each iteration, we are reducing the problem size by two. OK, so this is the observation and lead us to this t recursive version of the TN. OK, so this is the end of this video, and I hope this video can help you get better idea about the questions you are going to see in the midterm. Okay, bye.